hello everyone welcome back to another video uh if you're new here welcome and if you're not new here also welcome so today we're going to be talking about what supplies you should have before getting a horse besides uh like feed and stall and like the pasture like basic stuff like that uh we're gonna go over like the actual items that you should have before getting your horse or that you should supply over time uh depends on what it is though so first thing um is grooming tools so of course you got to keep your horse healthy and clean and in order to do that you have to have some grooming supplies uh these include curry comb hard brush soft brush hoof pick with the brush on the end right there because that'll help get rid of excess dirt a face brush sponge hoof oil mane and tail brush a shedding blader brush and a shampoo and conditioner also another thing to have is a detangler for your horse um a brand i'd suggest is cowboy magic which you, which you can see at the bottom but that is for conditioner but they supply just about anything so um pretty much all of the brands that i'm posting here are stuff that i recommend i wouldn't put something up here that i wouldn't recommend so uh the sleek easy uh which is below the text uh, that's the shedding blade. You can actually use it on uh, dogs and cats as well, not just horses. And this is their smaller size. I have their full size actually in my tack trunk. But um, another thing is shampoo. I actually have both the shampoo and conditioner on screen. Uh, this is the E3 antibacterial antifungal shampoo. Sorry, it's a little blurry. But uh, if you go to any of your local tax stores or even like a tractor supply, a rural king, most of the time they will actually have a lot of these supplies. So um, if you don't see them, uh, like this diamond gloss brush, that's not going to be in your local tax store. I would definitely recommend going on Dover Saddlery or Smart Pack or Riding Warehouse, one of those websites, and ordering one of those things. So um, another thing is... Uh, you always want to make sure you have a good hoof peck around because you need to be able to get out any dirt, rut, uh, mud, or rocks, anything that is stuck in your horse's hooves because that can cause bruising or an infection called thrush or other infections like an abscess that takes forever to draw out and it's super annoying and trust me when I say you do not want your horse to get an abscess. It is like the most painful obnoxious thing that you can have like with a horse like it's just so annoying i have my horse right now she had an abscess about a year ago and oh my god it took forever to go away and i was literally gonna like scream like i was so frustrated because not only was i annoyed that i couldn't ride but i just felt bad for my poor horse like she was just in so much pain she was limping around it was really bad and we just had to keep wrapping her hoof and putting iodine and this and that and it was just awful it wasn't fun at all but um that's my little story so just make sure you have these good grooming supplies another thing obviously basic tack now i'm gonna go on a little rant about the saddle situation because people will just go out and buy any old saddle throw it on a horse and call it a day you can't do that saddles are built differently than any other saddle each saddle is particular uh, particular to fit a horse's back a specific horse's back actually so some saddles actually quite a lot out there uh some brands being Wintech, cwd i know some of theirs are adjustable i think pessoa saddles are adjustable i don't really know because i've never owned one but um yeah a lot of different brands out there are adjustable i know that all Wintech english saddles are adjustable i don't know about their western because i've never ridden in a western one but i know for a fact that all Wintech um English saddles or English based saddles are adjustable. So, uh, definitely before buying one, uh, a lot of saddle fitters will come out and they'll measure your horse's back and they'll tell you, okay, here's the size, here's the seat size, go out and buy a saddle. And some saddle fitters will even help you shop according to what brand. So, let's say I want a CWD. 
they'll look on CWD's website, look at the measurements, look at the different qualities of the saddle and say, all right, here's a perfect saddle. What do you think? And if you like it, you order it. And then to be safe, you have the saddle fitter come out again, check your horse's back, check the saddle fit. And if they tell you it's a-okay, you are ready to throw that on and start riding. Do not start riding in a saddle unless you know for sure that it fits. A lot of trainers will understand basic saddle fit, but I recommend getting a saddle fitter anyway. Okay, next thing, bridle and reins. This is pretty obvious. You're gonna need something to steer your horse's face, face with. Uh, some horses don't need an actual bridle. Some of them just go in a hackamore style. Um, it all depends on the horse that you're getting. So, uh, some brands out there, uh, a lot of saddle brands are, um, they usually make brands, or, not brands, uh, bridles, sa uh, not saddles, oh god, I am twisting my words like crazy. They make bridles, reins, and girths, and sometimes they'll make saddle pads. It all depends on the brand that you're going with. Like Les Mew, I know they make, uh, saddle pads, they're kind of known for their saddle pads, it's down here. Uh, that's just one of their like a million colors and they do make different boots for horses they make um i think they make human boots i don't i think they do i will have to double check that i know Le Mew. uh i'm pretty sure they make girths as well i think they make bridles i don't think they've ever gotten into the saddle industry but i'm pretty sure they make just about anything um, Ovation is kind of like all around. Ovation does like everything from like helmets, shirts, pants, boots, saddles, bridles, girths, saddle pads, like you name it, Ovation does it. Um, so that's a really good brand to go through uh, and they're usually lower priced. Um, I'll make a video based on like different price ranges for like different items of tack and stuff. I gotta figure that whole thing out. But if that's something you guys would like to see, definitely let me know. And then any other training aids that you need, like a martingale or side reins or draw reins, whatever you want to say, or whatever you need, go ahead and get those. So uh, this is really, really important. Healthcare supplies. Um, healthcare with horses is very, 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 very important. So, uh, here are a couple things that you're gonna need. So, vet wrap. Uh, vet wrap is just going to be like the bandage that you wrap uh, injuries with or um, even abscesses, like I was talking about earlier when it comes to hoof health. If your horse has an abscess, it is typical to wrap it with um, gauze that has uh, iodine and salt and sometimes uh, you can use um, like a certain paste I use um, magna paste uh, to draw out anything along with iodine I kind of just throw a bunch of things together that'll help draw out infection so your main thing is like iodine and salt so if you want to just do that go for it but I like to add in the magna paste which I should have put in my little pictures area but I forgot so uh, I'm sure you can just look it up and it'll be there. But anyway, uh, like I was saying, iodine or betadine, they're pretty much the same thing. I don't really know the difference. Um, they pretty much serve the same purpose. Somebody tell me what the difference is because I have tried looking up the difference so many times. I think betadine is like a little more washed down than iodine because iodine is like an actual element, but I, I don't know. But either one will work. Uh, as long as it's topical and it, it does what it does, you're fine. So um, any cut or wound paste, a brand that I really like is Coat Defense. I kind of put like their whole line right here. So they come with, um, they have uh, as like a cut paste, which you can see right on the right side actually. And then on the left side, is their powder. I have both. I don't know what's in the middle. I think it's like the same thing. I don't really know what that is, but the left and the right, I have both of those and they work great. The powder is great to put over like anything you're trying to draw out, anything you're trying to dry up. That's really good. 
the paste is really good for putting over like cuts or scrapes that your horse gets any really big cuts or scrapes i would recommend flushing it out with iodine or abetadine and then putting some gauze over it and vet wrapping that and if there's so if your horse is showing any signs of illness and your cut doesn't look good definitely 100 percent get your vet out to make sure that uh the cut is not infected the best thing you can do is just keep it clean as much as you can just really really keep it clean flush it out with iodine or betadine just clean the absolute living crap out of it and keep vet wrapping it like change it every day even if the vet wrap doesn't like doesn't look like it's coming loose just clean it and clean it and clean it and clean it keep vet wrapping keep vet wrapping no matter what so uh next thing i already talked about this gauze just to put over any cuts or scrapes Banamine. Uh, so there's two different types of banamine. There's the oral paste, which I put down below the text. Uh, that is the paste version that goes uh, orally. And then there is a syringe version, like the uh, injection. The injection is known to work faster, but I don't know if you want to be poking your horse while they're hurt or injured or they're colicking or whatever so some people use the paste some people use the syringe but it's pretty much up to you so uh liniment so liniment if you don't know is a kind of like a paste or not a paste kind of like a gel to put over sore wounds so it's basically icy hot for horses so um i use draw it out which is right here uh, that's the liniment that I use. There's a million different types and they pretty much all do the same thing. But, uh, if you're really curious, ask your trainer, but, um, and that'll just help cool down your horse, especially after like a hard workout. I usually put that on Faye's back and her hips and like any, uh, joints that are very high impact. I will usually douse those in liniment. Um... Oh, okay, so Vaseline. Uh, Vaseline you can actually put on like any dry spots. Uh, you can also use that as like a sunscreen for horses uh, just to keep everything kind of soft and make sure they don't get like irritated. Any like, in, uh, not skin infections, uh, for any like areas where the skin's like irritated and you know that it's not an infection, Vaseline you can actually use, or you could just use coat defense. Also, Vaseline is good for trying to take off the chestnuts and the little ergots on your horse, uh, which are little clumps of keratin. They're perfectly normal. It's just um, a, uh, oh, what is it called? What is it? It starts with a V. It starts with a V. This vestibular, hold on. I gotta look this up. I gotta make sure I'm right. Nope, I can't find it out. Okay, well, anyway. Oh, I just remembered. Vestigial. Vestigial. It is um, that kind of part, uh, which basically means it's just kind of there, but it doesn't need to be. Like our wisdom teeth. That's a vestigial um, part of our bodies. That's usually why they get removed. Uh, also, your appendix is vestigial. I'm pretty sure your gallbladder is vestigial. I'm not sure but um, I know people can live without it. But anyway, um, yeah, so Vaseline can help take off those little clumps of keratin. So uh, next thing, horse safe sunscreen is really good. Um, I would look up some sunscreens that are like known to be horse safe or you can ask your trainer or vet. Uh, horses that have very white faces or like that white snip on their nose or they're very pink they're known to get sunburn, especially in very hot climates. So um, I would definitely recommend getting some sunscreen. Uh, white vinegar. White vinegar is great for um, a replacement for an antifungal spray. It's an all natural way to get rid of uh, like rain rot or uh, ringworm. Ringworm is fungal, I'm pretty sure. And um, other like skin infections that don't need to be treated with an antibiotic 
white vinegar is a great way to get rid of that. Um, or you can use an antifungal spray or antibacterial spray like Fungosol. Uh, you can see the bottle in the top right. Uh, so apple cider vinegar is something I really want to emphasize because you can actually give horses small amounts of apple cider vinegar in their grain or their food and that'll help with their gut health and their coat health. Pretty much anything uh, that you want to target, apple cider vinegar is really healthy and especially for humans. Uh, they're actually gummies that have apple cider vinegar in them for people. I don't know if you can give them the horses. I would ask your vet first. But um, yeah, apple cider vinegar can help with uh, hooves as well. I spray my horse's hooves pretty much any time I go out and it's raining or there's mud around because it disinfects their hooves. Uh, naturally and it just keeps them healthy and prevents thrush or any other um, infections like or the abscess thing pretty much I already just said this but apple cider vinegar is great so uh, I think this is the final slide I don't know uh, so this is a uh, kind of part of your tack category but I really wanted to uh, go over the different types of leg protection with you just because there's so many and there's so many things that protect a horse's legs that you can choose from so I kind of wanted to go over the different options that you have uh, I actually just realized I should have put another thing in here that I forgot to add but I'll go over that in a second so uh, if your horse has front shoes get um, bell boots or overreach boots they're like pretty much the same thing uh, these are an example right here, top right. They, uh, instead of, um, the horse, like, when they're extending their hind end to their front, sometimes they'll accidentally knock the shoe with their back hoof and it'll kick it off. So these boots help prevent that. So instead of them kicking the back of their foot and that hurts or kicking off a shoe, uh, they'll just kick the boot and they're safe so um just make sure you always get the right size especially when it comes to leg protection so uh open front boots right here these are actually the ones that i've ordered and they're still on back order because they were on back order back in july when i ordered them and oh my god they're taking forever to get here but anyway uh, yeah, those are by Lemieux, and uh, like I was saying before about their brand, super reliable, like 90% of the time. But um, of course, do your research before purchasing anything for your horse. But once again, Lemieux is great. Not sponsored, but Lemieux, please sponsor me. I would love that. Oh my god, I would literally cry. But um, yeah, those uh, help with protection when, uh, especially jumping, uh, open fronts will be seen a lot. So uh, for overall protection when doing flat work, um, I would use tendon boots. Sometimes people call open front boots tendon boots and they're kind of the same thing, but tendon boots are a little bit different. They look like this. So they're not open in the front uh, and they kind of provide like a full secure protection. But the problem with that is when your horse is jumping and they hit the front of the jump with their hooves or their legs, it won't hurt. So then they get in a habit of just constantly knocking the rail because they don't care. It doesn't do anything. Not saying that knocking the rail hurts. It just gives them like a little, like a hey. Hey, pick up your feet. <laughs> so, um... That's why I don't really like the tendon boots for jumping because it kind of gets your horse in the habit of not picking up their feet. Some horses don't have that problem. I'm not saying all of them do, but just something to think about. Uh, Cause I know I'm gonna get someone being like, oh my God, my horse doesn't do that. And they wear tendon boots and I don't care. So anyway, uh, here's the fetlock boots. I should have gotten over that uh, in a second or previously, why did I say in a second? Um, those are just kind of like open front boots, but for the hind end. And they just kind of support the back leg. And finally, ice boots. Uh, they're right here in the bottom middle. 
those help cool down your horse's legs. Um, after doing like a long or intense workout, those are great. I really need to get some. Like I've been dying to get them for a while, but they're kind of expensive. So anyone want to drop uh, some cheap, reliable ice boots in the comments? I'd really like that. But um, yeah, so I think, yeah, that's it. So, oops, hold on. There we go. Um, so that's it. That's all I really wanted to talk about. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead, leave them down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, and any video ideas, go ahead and leave them down as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.